All right, so this video is going to be a bit different from my past SpongeBob playthrough videos. This video, I decided to step things up. This time, I am doing a specific the damage damageless challenge. Now I know for a fact that a lot of people have already done this challenge, but I've only seen them do it with the bosses. But since they already did it with the bosses, it's obviously pretty easily done without through an entire gameplay. So I decided to take things up a notch. I decided that I would take it to the next level and also try and complete this game while also doing a pacifist challenge as well. Now, for those who don't know what either run is, no, the don't dam the damage list challenge is obvious. You can't take damage. Pacifist, I'm not allowed to kill anything. Now, there are going to be some rules. Those are going to be in the description for you guys to read. But basically, the first two rules are, as, as I just stated, I'm not allowed to take damage and I'm not allowed to kill anything. However, I decided to make exceptions to what I'm not allowed to kill. For the purpose of the video, I decided that I would make it to where I am allowed to kill the main story bosses. So anything that is an optional boss, like the Flying Dutchman, Prawn, and the King Jellyfish, are off limits. However, I am allowed to kill Robo, Sandy, Patrick, and Spongebob. Those are the only three exceptions to this challenge. But any and for and there is a third rule. The third rule is, if anything, should a robot or an enemy die to a moving plat, a moving plat, anything that moves, another robot, or to any of the thundering tikis, they do not count against me. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I've worked really hard on making this, considering this took me, this is going to take me forever to get together and everything. So, like I said, hope you guys enjoy the video. Remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And not only that, but make sure to subscribe because I plan on doing a damageless run right from the get-go for Paper Mario, the Origami King. I forgot what the name was for a second. But anyways, let's hop into this video. Alright, so for the first so obviously for the first part, we start out in SpongeBob's house after he has a unique little conversation with his pet snail. First we have to go around and collect all the shiny objects. Now, there is just, there is enough, and we're going to be grabbing all of it, so that way we have enough for a later area. And with this, this kind of, and there's only one spatula in this house, so that's all we're going to be seeing in this area. However, we are not going to go straight for the closet where the spatula is at. First, we're heading over to the attic. Now, the reason for that is, is that in order to complete this challenge, we are going to need to collect as many socks as we can. If we do not get all the ones that I need, I will not be able to do this. And it's gonna be at least 50. So, with this, so after doing a little, after we, so after a little bit of parkouring and some quick, we are able to get our first sock, which was fairly easy. Actually, it was completely easy. But after that, we head over to the closet and grab our first golden spatula. After that, we head on over into Bikini Bottom, where we decide to cause a lot of mayhem. Because I know for a fact we are. Now that we are in Bikini Bottom, we are gonna we have some things to do first. First thing, we need to go and ignore ignore annoy Squidward. After that, we are going to collect the golden spatula on top of our own house. So first thing to do, we're gonna ignore ignore annoy Squidward. And destroy all of his lovely property. Okay, 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 just stop. After annoying him, he'll just give us a golden spatula, so we go away. However, if we break everything he owns that we can break, we will also get another sock, giving us two socks and two spatulas. With this, we are on our on our way to success. Now we're on next. We're gonna head on over to Patrick. Where we can see hey, he has Patrick. one so sock. One you're just standing on. He's standing on one of his socks. If we next we go into his house after talking to him to get a fourth sock. With this, we have a lot already. Because now it's time to head on over to Jellyfish Field and first area. 
Now, jellyfish fields is not that hard to deal with, considering it's just probably it's mostly been used as a tutorial area to get used to the controls. We're not going to start having problems until we go over to downtown Bikini Bottom, where we'll encounter, I would say, our first problem. And of course, we also get the sea squared where it gets stung like crazy. Oh, now remember, I'm not allowed to kill these robots, so, which means if I also have to avoid taking damage. Now, I did forget to grab a golden spatula back on my our pineapple. However, we can get that later. That one is not a problem to grab. So, first, our first objective is to come over here and grab a sock that is hidden behind a wall of tiki's. Once we break through this tiki's, we can collect our fifth sock. And with this, we're halfway to getting the first spatula we can acquire from Patrick. Next, we have to. Next, we buy the bridge so we can continue through our journey and get across to the fir to get acquire yet another sock. Now, if we can now if we parkour over this area in front of me, we can hit a button that will allow us to get the, the, a sixth so another sock. Which, luckily, this pl this thing is easy as heck to parkour. And it is super easy to get back across from it. Not only that, but we also get a nice amount of shiny objects for us, which we will need a bunch of later, since we will have to buy all of the shiny... All of the golden... I'm having a start. Since we'll have to buy all of the golden spatulas from Mr. Krabs in order to complete the game. Next, we'll destroy all of these tiki's and collect their money. And we will continue on and destroy this pufferfish shooting cannon in order to acquire our third spatula. Now, true, I already know, for one, you don't actually have to destroy the cannon. You don't destroy the cannon to get the spatula. You bungee jump. You get a massive wedgie first. Now that that's... Gary, now we get to talk to Gary again, wow. who says there's a golden spatula right on the off the edge of this if we give ourselves a massive wedgie. And of course, we do just that so we can get our third spatula. And with this, we are well on our way to being able to head on over to the to downtown Bikini Bottom. However, we're going to be playing through a decent amount of jellyfish fields due to the fact that we actually don't have that much to get. And remember, the ru since the rules say I'm not allowed to kill any enemies, that means we will not be doing the... We will not be going after King Jellyfish, which means we won't be able to get the Golden Spatula at the end of the first... The first, what I would consider, official sliding section. Now, this area right here is a little, ter is a little difficult because these guys have half ham robots and the little boogers that have to oh i almost fell the little boogers that chase us now there is indeed a seventh sock if we come over here and jump up here oh, oh boy if we jump up here we can grab a seventh sock oh and if we can get up like dangerously above water but luckily we are able to get it without issues so with that we are now one three away from being able to claim our first spatula from patrick now if we continue now this is what i would consider the first challenging part of the playthrough because not only do i have these robots to deal with i have to break their spawner in order to hit the button behind it and since the spawners blow up, if I'm too close to it, I will take damage. So this is the first interesting part of the of the game. So first we're going to do is we're going to jump above these guys. I got to make sure... Ooh. Oh. And unfortunately, I killed the robots. Which means we are going to have to reload. Which means we have to reload back to our last save point. Because it was before... Now, like I said... This part is a little challenging because you have to be careful that you don't accidentally kill the robots because they chase you. And with since they decided to get stuck, I was able to just uh, this time uh, I'm able to hit the spawner 
without take and with this I am able to get past and claim the fourth spatula due to some sick proper maneuvering and some easy dodging and now that we are put into the next area we get to meet mermaid man for the first time however we don't have time to talk to him because we have to go save Patrick who has gotten himself stuck on an island surrounded by robots and it's up to us to save him since mermaid man can't remember to tell us since mermaid man can't do it himself because of his old age but however due to this first slide instruction we are able to get two more socks giving us a total of nine we also get a new checkpoint which means we have a new area to reload to now this part's a little interesting that we have to not we have to hit three buttons in order to get to patrick however this set part of the game is not that difficult because not only can we just avoid the little robots that we we can also simply just break and do a hit and run type style style attack maneuver i am having stutters but anyways with this strategy we are able to go we are able to get away from the robots press the buttons and get far enough away before the spawners blow up that we don't have to worry about about taking damage and with this is lat and with this And with this, the last button is pressed. And we can safely save Patrick while he pulls up his pants. With this, we now get to play as Patrick. Now that we have saved Patrick, this next section, we get to play as him. So, and with this, and not only that, but with this, we collect our fifth spatula, which will allow us to go into bed go into downtown bikini bottom and per, which is going to like i said before will be the first official challenging part of the game next but before we do that we have to go we have to do some cave spelunky and with it and in order to do that we have to launch ourselves over this little gap hey, on our way over to the cave we run into plankton which i'm going to firmly body slam and unfortunately i can't squash him like a bug like the bug he is but anyways we now proceed through the cave which has a lot of dangers from spiky from spiked floors to erupting volcano mini volcanoes that could easily damage us however they're not an issue the issue for this action is going to be the slide and the reason is is because it has thundering tiki's on it and if i hit them I will take damage. These are not that hard to avoid. Simply wait for them to either explode to go down and wait for the lava balls to explode and we can safely traverse through the cave. But we also have to be careful of a tiny one tiny jellyfish. And there and we've officially have taken our first point. Our, and unfortunately, I have taken my first piece of damage. So, because of that, we now have to reload back to our last save point, which was the checkpoint that we got. Like I said, this little section is a li isn't too hard to maneuver through. It's just the spiked floors and the lava balls are hard to predict, are kind of hard to avoid since they, well, for one. And with this, that we're in, oh, never mind. Now that we are safely past all the spikes, all that is left to do. For the first part of the cave is simply stack up these watermelons simply throw them to the spot that we are and we can easily climb up now this section this little part says you have to use two watermelons however you actually only need one to jump up and with this we enter the scary part of this cave and that is the slide not only does this thing have lava all over it spewing out but it also has thundering tiki's that i have to be wary of which, but as you just did, is no problem to avoid. Now we can get our, and with this, we are capable of getting our tenth sock to trade back to Patrick. Now this part looks hard, but it's completely simple. Simply just jump up here to avoid the first area, first thing of robots, 
wait for the robots to lose interest in you. If you happen to gain their attention, run past them, and and you're home free. Now, there is a spatula right there. However, the only way to get to it is if you were to stun one of these robots and throw them at the button, which in turn kills them, or you're able to get one of these watermelons up here and thrown at the button. I have unfortunately been able, unable to do this during the practice runs, so we are just going to skip it since we can't, are not allowed to stun the robots and use them for kill... Wait, and throw them at it since it would kill them. After spo after carefully traversing through the cave, we come across the tar tartar sauce shooter, which is what I like to call it. Mr. Krabs knows that we're that we're looking for the king jellyfish. However, we will be unable oh, to help blood. Squidward due to the fact that one, we are not going to be able to fight King Jellyfish to get his king je to get his king jellyfish jelly, since one. We are not allowed to take him down. So, this area right here, I'm going to say, is probably the most dangerous of this level. Since there are a bunch of tartar sauce suitors. I'm also going to sit this... Oh! I don't know if I died. I don't know if I took damage. But that is unfortunate, because that means it takes more time. Anyways, continuing where we left off. As I was saying, the most dangerous thing for this area are the tartar sauce shooters. Since they can have a great amount of distance, their sh shots can make cover great amounts of distance, which can cause problems. We're going to trigger this little guy so he blows up, and have him blow up those tiki so we can get a little extra money. And unfortunately, I've taken damage again. Like I said, they are very hard to get past. Like I have said, they are a bit of a troublesome type of robot due to the fact that they shoot. Meaning they can cover distance and, unfortunately, shoot while you're in midair, causing you to be unable to dodge their shots. So again, now this part, it, we're not even going to bother. We're not even going to go through this cave. I'm just doing this because I want the money. And while we let, wait for these robots to leave me alone, which they aren't, we are going to head over here where we're going to go get our secret little passage to get up Spork Mountain. Now, a lot of people, I haven't seen a lot of people use this little path, so I'm not sure how many people know of it. But if you come over here, you can jump from that ledge down here without spending the, what is it, I think like 250 uh, shiny objects to pay. And with this, and if we come over here and come across this little parkour set, we can actually acquire an 11th sock. This will start us off on our next set of socks needed for Patrick. And then we come over here, jump on this, and we're immediately brought back to where we were. Now, this next, this guy is a nuisance. This one robot has caused me so much suffering during my test runs. However, this time it seems the RNG gods are with me, and I was able to traverse safely across without issue. And just like that, we have successfully gotten past. And I forget about this area a lot, so I'm going to come down here and get the 12th sock that I could have been having if I had remembered to come jump down there. And this extra, and the extra shiny objects. And from this point on, it is a simple, it is a straight path to victory for us. Now, after doing some parkour, we are capable of getting our last spatula, that we can acquire in Jellyfish Field. Now this part looks a little hard, but it's not as bad as you as people think, because you can simply dodge all their shots. And since that, and by simply pausing and going to the load menu, I am able to get back to, back to Bikini Bottom damage free. True, we took some damage throughout the level. However, like I said, I am allowed to reload to the previous save point to continue the run so next up now before we head on over to the good old downtown bikini bottom we are going to come over here break these and st trigger this platform to spawn i unfortunately do not like this the fact that they gave it a cutscene but it's whatever then we come over here trigger the timer and we are capable of getting our seventh spatula 
I have lost count already. And from here, it is a straightforward jump parkour sit. And just like that, we had 10 seconds to spare. Now, on to downtown Bikini Bottom. Arriving Upon arriving in downtown Bikini Bottom, Mrs. Puff is going to be panically asking for our help to recollect 11 steering wheels. I am sorry, Mrs. Puff, but we are going to be unable to do that for you, considering that we will not be able to get all 11. However, we are able to get our first spatula. Avoiding these guys, if I can, we come over to this area. The only thing, the only thing we have to do is get these thundering tiki's shot. And just like that, there's oh. Nope. And just now, this does take a little bit of time, but because unfortunately you have to get it perfect, you have to jump as it's shooting, otherwise it doesn't do it. And unfortunately, this is a troublesome part. However, that shot does take it down. We simply do repeat. We simply rinse and repeat. Oh boy. I'm not gonna lie, this is scary. Two, three, after pressing all four buttons, a giant anvil will fall down and destroy the cannon. And now we can safely come up here and claim our eighth spatula. If I can get this, if I can get this guy, get on this guy's leg, that is, and his leg. Next, we have to come, now to this area, now that we're clear on this area, all we have to simply do is come over here Trigger the button. Next, we get introduced to the spinning slapper, as I call him, because he is a complete and total douche when it comes to his job. And the reason I say that is because, for one, he chases, and he is really fast. Unfo Luckily, though, he loses interest real easy. However, we're going to destroy this guy. We're going to take the Thunder and Tiki and blow him up. Now, remember... I, in the rules, I am allowed, Thundering Tiki's do not count as me killing them. Since I do not have to physically hit the Thundering Tiki's in order to make them blow up, I can safely kill, rope, use them to kill the robots that I don't like chasing me. And next we're going to come over here, blow up this stack of Tiki's, get some more money, and we're going to... If I can, jump up here. Just like that. And with that, we have our 13th sock. And just and with that, we are able to get, and just like that, we cross the dangerous cat. This door is now we get to talk game. to Butter Now we talk to Bubble Buddy for the first time, but we don't have time to talk to him because guess what? We want to get our 14th sock for Patrick. Because now the re now a lot of you might be asking, why don't you why didn't you turn into a ball? Because there's an easier way around this little issue. If we jump, if we do a little bit of parkouring, we can jump over the fence, trigger these thundering tiki's to blow the gate up, and we can simply walk around without having to go grab the ball, for, go into the sponge ball form, and get and have to deal with the robots. And just like that, we are already Hi, we are past, and we also passed the uh, little spot where we're supposed to go to talk to Gary to initiate the talk with Gary. Which I think is another cool thing, but just to, but to make things easier, we destroy the spawner, and we make, and we open up another path for us to use later. We'll also do the same thing here, just because for one, like I said, easier to traverse. However, we are only going to be making one trip here. Okay, actually, that's not true. We're going to be making two trips here, one for later for another spatula that we'll come back for. Now we get to play as Sandy. Her only, she will be played a lot through this game due to her ability to glide and to be able to cross these massive gaps that Patrick and SpongeBob wouldn't normally be able to. And this is where I get to use my first official little skip. We use the, we use the lasso hook to simply cross past the robot that guards that bottom part that would normally lead up to the spawner so we don't have to worry about killing him. Of course, we have also forgotten to trigger that. However, it is okay. We're simply going to come over here and break the cannon. We're also going to come up back over here because there's a f we can get our official 15th sock if I can get in the box. 
if we come, if we hook back onto this and come over here, we can get another sock, like I just said. Now, there is a, now you are able to jump from here back over there, but it's very hard to do, so we're just going to go back through the box. After traversing this little ca little gap, we can grab our ninth spatula, meaning we are only one more from being able to go to Goo Lagoon. However, our journey in be downtown Bikini Bottom does not stop there. After coming, after crossing through downtown Bikini Bottom, we come to the rooftops. Now, first, before we even do anything else, we need to turn back to SpongeBob, which luckily we can do by simply coming over here and coming to this little swap station. By pressing this button, we can jump up here and walk over here to get a sixth, our 16th sock. And with this, we are almost ready to get two shocks from Patrick. After jumping back down and opening this box for later, I can I can safe I can now happily switch back to Sandy. This is where I'm not gonna lie, this next part of the video is where I actually thought I was screwed. Because I didn't think about doing this before. However, you would the way the normal way that you would have to normally get past this is to kill that robot. However, I was able to find an alternative method that would allow me to heed to my rules. If I hook... Okay, it's going to take me a couple tries. After about five minutes of struggling, I'm finally able to get proceed through. And from here on out, it is simply a, queen, a clean sweep. We can easily traverse through the rest of the, king, of the rooftops without issue. Now after safely traversing through the some of the remaining parts of rooftops, I am able to collect another sock. Now this part is a little tricky because due to this robot I have to be able to turn my camera. However, after a little bit of struggling, I am able to get past it safely. Now here is a challenging part. Since that guy's here, I have to worry about him. However, this time, we don't. Simply, easily, and safely collecting our 10th spatula. And from here, we switch to SpongeBob, let's press on this button, and we can, ooh, I almost failed, and we can sim and we can nicely and safely come back here to grab our 18th sock. And with this final sock from this area, we are now done with downtown bikini bottom until later next we now we return back to bikini bottom next it's off to goo lagoon next up we meet monsoon the most day one of the most annoying and one of the more dangerous robots that we have to deal with on this challenge since he is capable of summoning lightning storms in any area that he happens to be, we will be forced to have to make a, either a quick getaway or Spotlight, hope that we can simply do it fast enough. Next, we talk to Larry, who has been who is complaining because we have his everyone's sunscreen has unfortunately been st stolen by one robot. However, we are unable to help due to the due to our pacifist due to the pacif pacifist rules. I am having problems saying that word today. And unfortunately, I have taken damage, which means I have to load back to where I just was. However, it is not that bad. After finally being able to successfully get past the robots, I am finally able to collect my 19th sock and escape damage free. After a, couple, a bunch of failed attempts. However, next we come over to Mrs. Pop. Who has unfortunately decided to give all these kids a bunch of helium filled balloons however we're not even going to talk to her we are simply going to pop all the kids set all the kids free so we don't have to because frankly i do not want to talk to her mostly because she has nothing interest useful to say to us other than the kids balloons are been filled up too much with helium after going back and saving the third 
child, we simply now have to cross this dangerous ocean of goo to save the last two that we can claim our 11 spatula. After rescue, now that all the kids are rescued, we can head on over, back on over to Mrs. Puff and claim our reward without her. My hero. With and with this, we now have our 11 spatula. After safely making it making it through Goo Lagoon, we now come to the come to the sandcastle. With this, and in this area, we are capable of getting another sock, two more socks, as well as one. Uh, actually, no wait, I take it back. We can get three more socks plus a golden spatula. So After we talk to Bubble Buddy, who asked what Patrick's supposed to be. He simply replies by saying, "I'm a starfish." So, what are you supposed? And by all, and Neely, and thanks to him, he only almost got our run ruined. Now, we are not going to be able to claim this sock quite yet, due to some circumstances needing to be met. However, we are able to simply skip a huge section of this and get past the robot that normally that spawns there. Easy peasy. However, I'm unable to see. And like that, we have gotten past the the main part of the sandcastle. Next is time. Now it's time for some setup. In order to get that sock that is underneath that jump, that little jump pad, we need to actually respawn ourselves right here. And how are we going to do that? Easy, we're gonna kill ourselves. By doing this, we will actually despawn the robot that spawned there, and we'll be able to pick up the ice and destroy the spawner without having the fear that after reactivating the challenge, it is now time to claim that sock. Now, it is a pretty difficult sock to claim, but hopefully we won't have to do it more than once. If we simply wait until the spawn until it gets right up to where that waterfall is i can do this jump down and jump and jump up here to get our 20 second sock next now we have a bit of a tricky part due to these about due to these beach ball cannons not only do these beach ball cannons randomly shoot in a direction it is pretty hard to predict where it will shoot because it, well, like I said, just randomly does it. Sometimes it shoots in the same direction multiple times in a row like it just did, and sometimes it doesn't. It decides to be a jerk and shoot directly at you as you're traversing through it. However, it seems that this time, Lady Luck has decided to give us good RNG. But now it's time for the troubling turret. See, there is a second cannon over here that likes to shoot all the way over here. Which means I'm going to have to be dead careful traversing this part because it can shoot right there. However, this time we seem to have some good luck and are able to get past it without taking damage. Now it's time to claim another sock and one more spatula. And because of where the sock is, I'm going to also get a bunch, and I mean a bunch, of money. And with this, we are now at a new save point. However, this robot's going to be a jerk and try to chase us. And unfortunately damage us. So, it's time to reload right back to where we were. Now, luckily for us, since we already destroyed the cannons, even though we had to reload, they will not respawn. Meaning, we have... Nothing to worry about here. Next up is the Goo Lagoon Sea Caves. Now, this is going to be the first challenging part to the video. Because there is a one section that we are going to have to deal with. Hello, Gary. What's new? After talking to Gary, he tells us that there is a golden spatula at the end of this cave. After, once we traverse it, we'll be able to claim it. However... There are a couple more things we're going to need to traverse. First, we are gonna have to come we gotta come back here and grab that sock. And we also have to get rid of these thundering tikis, cause last 
because during one of my practice runs, I decided to be an idiot and try to get across this before they blew up. It did not work. After doing some quick setup, hopefully not having to... Oh, oh boy. Now, this right here, I'm going to say this now, likes to be a problem. Because not only do I have to jump across all five of these to get to this back, to get to this sock, but unfortunately I have to deal with pufferfish. However, the pufferfish are not that easy to get, or are not that hard to get around. But however, it seems they don't. It seems that RNG is not going to be on my side for this first attempt. I don't know why I said RNG. But luckily for us, the checkpoint is right here. Which means we can cross this a lot easier. Now, after some quick camera rotations, we can start parkouring, which I am telling you, telling everyone this right now who watches this video, this is the scariest part of this challenge, because if I mess up, which luckily I didn't, it takes a while to get back. Not to mention, it takes a lot of, it takes a lot of, a lot, a lot of accuracy to do that. Now, as you can see over here, we have some thundering tiki's, which we can ignite Grab the sock, jump down. Did that take damage? No, I didn't. All right, but anyways, as I said, Thundering Tiki's will not count as me killing the robots. If I do not physically hit or attack the Thundering Tiki's, I will not. It is not accounted as me killing them. Rather, me simply making the Tiki's angry and having and having them self-destruct. And unfortunately, I've had to set that up again for the second time, even though I missed. But now we may we can continue to proceed through the cave. Now, this is the challenging part. Not only do I have to be able to make it through this little section without taking damage, unfortunately, that's going to be extremely hard because not only is the bridge extremely small, but I also have to be able to get past that ham rope, that hammer robot. If I can't, I'm afraid I'm stuck. However, it is possible. With the right amount of timing, I can wait for that to resurface itself after it's been submerged, and after that thing turns itself around, I can charge forward and unfortunately get hit. Like I said, this is the frustrating part of this little video, of this first section of the video. Now we attempt again, and luckily we are able to surface we are able to pass the robot and unfortunately not make it because I misjumped. Because of how simple it is, but yet difficult. Because not only do I have to deal with this little, this little, little, little robot, I also have to deal with the hammer, hammer one. And luckily again, I was able to time it perfectly and get across. And also get across this and avoid him. Now we have a new checkpoint and a new spawn. Next is this little sec. Now here is another challenging part about this area. Because not only is there a hammer, but there's also a monsoon. Two exceptionally annoying robots. But however, we are lucky enough to them, pass them, get the button, and get past to claim another golden spatula. Now... We have enough that we could go to the first boss. However, we're not going to turn back yet. Because there are still two more. There are still two more we can claim. Now we're going to now we're going to talk to Mr. Krabs for the first time. Who is looking? Who is asking us to find Patrick? Sorry, simply turn into Patrick and have it here. And he's telling us that the carnival is closed. Mostly because the annoying robots have chosen to take it over. However, we can't kill him, so we are unfortunately stuck. Now, there was an issue with me figuring out how to do this without killing the robot, but there actually is. Since the ticket booth robot, technically... Now, this is something I tried to discuss with my friend. He said since it's mandatory for being able to get across this, he we agreed that this part, that this robot must die. Since he is living in an inanimate object... And unfortunately, it's the only way to proceed through and get enough golden spatulas. We decided that he... Okay, I need to start that over. Now, this robot is a bit of a problem. 
due to the fact, since, as I've said before, now this little area right here is a bit of a problem. Because in order to proceed through the rest of Gulagoon Pier, I must be able to, I have to kill this robot in the booth. Which I am going to have to do in order to proceed. However, since this robot is a mandatory kill, or is unfortunately needed to be killed to proceed through, I'm, he will be the only robot that is normal that I am allowed to kill. But, and after that, we are able to proceed. Next up... Next up is the Wacka Tiki Minigame. And with this, we can claim another sock. Now you may be wondering why that is. That's because this little minigame, if you can break all the Tiki's, will give you a new, another sock. However, I've unfortunately lost because I was unable to kill all the Tiki's. However, they decided to poke their little heads up again. But it seems that I did not kill them all. So unfortunately, I will have to do it again. But luckily, it is not that hard to do. Simpl by simply belly bonging everywhere, you can actually destroy a lot of the Tiki's pretty quickly. And I believe there's only one more remaining. However, I think we have to get them all in like the first go. And it seems I will have to attempt it, do it for a third time. And with the third time, and third time's the charm, because we are able to kill all the Tiki and claim another sock. Now normally, during now what I did during the practice one was an unfortunate mistake. Normally, you would have to take this melon and throw it at the spawner at the end. However, since we are not in need of the sock right now, we are not going to do that. Instead, we will come back later after we have acquired the cruise booster rockets and use them and you kill it like that. However, if we also, but next, if we come up here, we can acquire yet another sock, giving us a total of 26. Now, normally I would do, I would, now for this part, I would normally press this button. However, there's another way. I found that when, while trying to traverse this without taking damage from the robot, found that accidentally discovered this little secret path that I could take instead. And with this, I was able to get, and with that, I'm able to simply get across. Next is for our next spatula. Now, it is all the way on the other side, so we need, so which means we're gonna have to freeze this multiple times. Although I will say it is cool, it is really cool watching the ice. And with this, we have our 14th spatula, and we're gonna, and now that we are gonna go trade in our spatulas that we got in order to be able to go, in order to the suck, and we. <laughs> Next up, next, we're gonna head back over to Patrick, and we are gonna go trade in 10 sock, 10, in all the socks, sets of socks we've gotten him in order to acquire a couple more golden spatulas. After to returning Patrick's lost socks, we are able to claim two more golden spatulas. And unfortunately, he thinks we, we're talking in Italian, so he's unable to talk in Italian. Or speak Italian. Next up, it's time for the true face of horror. The first boss, Robo Sandy. Now, I am not gonna lie, I am not a fan of this boss due to its final phase. However, after a lot of practice, it's not that hard. The first phase is simple. Dodge its, dodge its elbow slam attack, and as it jumps, does its butt bounce, simply jump up in the air, but use your bubble butt, Use your bubble slam and you can cause its head to pop up to deal it damage. After, take, after doing this a couple of times, the Neptune scoreboard falls down and exposes the robot's next weakness. Now, it's time for Patrick to do his thing. Now, the robot will do a similar pattern, but except it adds one more move. It now has a sprint. It now, instead, extends out its legs in order to try and hit us. However... Once it's done that, you're simply you're free, and it is an easily dodged move. So if you're so if you try to do this challenge at home, just for yourself, just to see if it's pop, you can do it yourself. 
Um, I'm letting you know it's not till the next stage that you have to start freaking out because it's the next phase that's the true face of nightmares. After a rinse and repeat cycle, you can easily defeat the second phase of Robo Sand. Now comes for the third and the most dangerous. However, I'm going to state this right now. There is a glitch. And unfortunately, I have been take I've taken damage, which forces me to reload the game. I'm not going to lie. This boss fight will take me a couple of tries because unfortunately, due to the it's now expanded on its move to from instead of just being one set of springed out limbs, now it uses all of them, which means I have to dodge jump through the middle. And after surprisingly only three attempts, I am able to take down Robo Sandy. Let's see if SpongeBob goes for it. Nighty night. And with this, I am going to end part one of this little series. Now, the reason I am choosing to do these in parts is because each section is going to be, it's each section of Bikini Bottom is going to be its own video. Now, so I hope you guys enjoyed this passive, this passive. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this damageless pacifist challenge run of ba battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Make sure to hit the like button and can leave a comment if you like this stuff. Not to mention, subscribe to the channel. It really help, makes me feel good. It makes the channel look, it helps the channel out. Not to mention, I enjoy making stuff like this. So I hope you guys enjoy this ch little challenge series I'm doing. And I'll talk to you all later.